Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Belfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree Number no. One and Eleven of 2021, establishing the National Council for Arts. The decree stipulates that the National Council for Arts shall be affiliated with the Cabinet and the Minister responsible for it before the Legislative Branch shall be named as per an edict issued by the Prime Minister. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree Number no. 112 of 2021, forming the National Council for Arts. The National Council for Arts shall be chaired by Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa bin Hamad Al Khalifa and will include Sheikh Turki bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa as Deputy Chairman and Sheikh Dua bin Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Belqis Ahmed Fakhro, Umar Ismail Rashid, Haifa Majid Al Jishi, and Abbas Muhammad Al Musawi as members for a four year term that can be renewed for several times. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree No. 113 of 2021, appointing Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman bin Muhammad Al Khalifa as Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports, and Residence of the Interior Ministry. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree No. 114 of 2021, appointing Ibrahim Hassan Ali Al Hawaj as Under Secretary for Agriculture and Marine Wealth at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. The current Assistant Under Secretary for Technical Services at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Kaldama Ali Abdullatif Ali, was appointed as Assistant Under Secretary for Roads at the same ministry. Under the same decree, Huda Mirza Abbas Muhammad was appointed as Assistant Under Secretary for Technical Services. Services and Fatih Abdullah Faria Ismail was appointed as Assistant Secretary for Sanitation at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. The Royal Court has announced that an invitation by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the President of the Federative Republic of Brazil, will arrive in the Kingdom of Bahrain tomorrow, to November 26, on an official visit during which he will hold talks with His Majesty the King on relations between the two friendly countries. His Majesty the King and the Brazilian President will also discuss the latest regional and international developments. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the delegation of the Aladdin project headed by its founder, Baron Eric de Rothschild, and the chairman of the project, Dr. Leah Baser, the French ambassador to Bahrain, Jerome Cochard, as well as the accompanying delegation upon their visit to the kingdom. His Majesty welcomed the delegation and reviewed with them a number of affairs and initiatives that promote the values of peace and coexistence among people, expressing pride in Bahrain's pioneering culture and historical heritage heritage that made it a global model for fraternity and coexistence as it embraces various religions, sects and cultures thanks to the adherence of its people to the noble humanitarian principles based on respect for all. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain will continue its efforts and in spreading and consolidating the principles of moderation and promoting dialogue and reapproachment between cultures, praising the important role played by the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and its continued continuous endeavors to achieve these goals. His Majesty expressed Bahrain's support for the role played by UNESCO, which is supervising the al Din project to build bridges of reapproachment and communication between religions and civilizations for peace and prosperity for all mankind. For their part, the delegation expressed their thanks to His Majesty the King for the warm reception, expressing their appreciation for Bahrain's stances that support the respect for all religions and peoples.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict Number 61 of 2021, transferring and appointing directors at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. The current director of the Construction Projects Directorate of the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Maryam Abdullah Mohammed Amin, was appointed as director of the Strategic Projects Directorate at the same ministry. The following directors were appointed at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning: Yagub Abdullah, Yagub Saga, director of the Human and Resources Directorate at the Municipalities Affairs, Khalid Ali Ahmed Al Jalahna, Director of the Information Systems Directorate, Dana Mohammed Ahmed Mudaffar, Director of the Construction Projects Directorate, Lamia Mohammed Jassim Tulfet, Director of the Household Waste Directorate, Yusuf Mohammed Jamal Gassar, Director of the Acquisition and Compensation Directorate, Sabah Abdul Khalaq Isa Sabah, Director of the Building Maintenance Directorate, Amal Abdul Nabi Abdullah Khalaf, Director of the Material Engineering Directorate, Hassan Jafar Abdullah Maki, Director of the Fish Wealth Directorate. The Deputy Prime Minister Zahana Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadaybiya Palace. The cabinet commended His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's address at the Paris Peace Forum's opening session, which emphasized the importance of strengthening international cooperation on scientific development and improving global governance. The speech highlighted that a safe, prosperous, and sustainable existence for humanity can be achieved through close international cooperation, especially in light of recent global events and challenges. The cabinet commended the official visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the UAE and his meeting with the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The cabinet highlighted that the visit will further develop bilateral cooperation between the two countries and will expand horizons for collaboration in all fields. The cabinet was then updated on the progress of the economic recovery plans implementation. It noted the visits by the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa to several projects that support the development of promising sectors and Bahrain's new tourism strategy. In recognition of International Day for Tolerance, the Cabinet affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to promoting tolerance, openness and pluralism to achieve the visions of His Majesty the King. The Cabinet then discussed several memorandums with the following outcomes. The approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on the implementation of the initiatives under the Fiscal Balance Programme, which aims to achieve fiscal balance by 2024. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on a package of initiative proposed by the Revenue Development and Private Sector Integration Task Force to develop the Kingdom's non-oil revenues. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the inauguration of a digital platform for planning procedures, planning by the Urban Planning and Development Authority. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the designation of a concerned authority for regulating gated communities as per Article 49 of the Real Estate Sector Regulation Law. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the extension of the agreement between the Sustainable Energy Authority and the United Nations Development Programme. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the draft agreement between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the International Cooperation of the Republic of Italy regarding the establishment of a joint committee for bilateral cooperation across various fields. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Federative Republic of Brazil related to opening new areas of bilateral cooperation between the two countries. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to a proposal submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then took note of ministerial reports regarding Bahrain's hosting of the 38th meeting of GCC Interior Ministers as well as visits to the Swiss Confederation, France and the UAE and the outcomes of Bahrain hosting the 114th meeting of the GCC Financial and Economic Cooperation Committee. GCC Financial and Economic Cooperation Committee.
His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs is Hana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received founder of Ala Din Project, Baron Eric de Rothschild, and Dr. Leah Bazer, and several members of the French Project during the official visit of the delegation in the presence of the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Mu'ayyad, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Under Secretary, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, as well as French Ambassador to Bahrain, Jerome Cochard. His Highness affirmed that the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa affirms His Majesty's keenness on the development and stability of different religions and peaceful coexistence and spreading the values of forgiveness and moderation. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the Kingdom supports the Al Adin project supervised by the UNESCO and building bridges between cultures and religions, which is what Bahrain is doing during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, praising the prominent role played by the project in spreading a culture of forgiveness and coexistence. His Highness discussed ways of cooperation with the leaders of the project. For his part, the founder of the al Adin project expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Highness for the warm reception and the visions he offered to continue the project's prosperity. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailed the positive results of the Spanish team Cordoba CF, chaired by Bahrain in the Spanish League's second division over CP Corona 5 0. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his happiness with his new victory, which confirms the successful march of the team under Bahraini management, noting the presidency's keenness to create the ideal atmosphere for the players in all matches, which was reflected in the chair of positive results. His Highness Sheikh Nasser wished the team all success in its upcoming matches, praising the high spirit that the players enjoy in all matches. The Deputy Prime Minister and the President of the Development and Infrastructure Ministerial Committee, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, held a number of discussions with local newspapers. The discussions revolved around tourism development projects in the southwestern part of the kingdom, including Bilaj Al Jazair and Jumeirah Beach in Bahrain Bay. He affirmed that the kingdom continues on the path of development and recovering from the effect from the effect of the pandemic in order to create opportunities for all. He affirmed that the Kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister has developed its infrastructure rapidly in recent years, which enabled various projects to keep up with the development of the Kingdom. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim Al Hamar, affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is one of the first countries to submit the second voluntary national report of the progress made in implementing the new urban plan through the United Nations electronic platform, which represents a model in achieving the sustainable development goals. He added that the report included an opening speech by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in which he praised the efforts made by the people of Bahrain in various sectors in achieving more developments, especially in implementing the new urban plan, which is one of the pillars of the government's program that aim to achieve economic growth, raise human development rates and apply the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and justice in accordance with the economic vision of 2030. A delegation from the BIPD headed by Deputy Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Sheikh Amey al Atebi, visited Egypt where a number of agreements were signed with various institutions. The visit aims to learn from experiences, exchange expertise and arrange a number of workshops as well as enhance bilateral cooperation. The delegation highlighted the numerous achievements of the Kingdom in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. The delegation praised the bilateral relations and cooperation thanks to the keenness of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. The delegation visited a number of institutions where they looked into the work and expertise of these institutions and discussed ways to further enhance the cooperation with BIPD. Deputy Chairman of the Board of Trustees expressed thanks and appreciation to the heads of the institutions and expressed hope that the visit will result in bolstering the bilateral cooperation. 
The American Chamber of Commerce in Bahrain, AmCham, and the Bahrain Indian Society, BIS, held a high-level hybrid forum which explored opportunities. The Bahrain U.S. free trade agreement, the FTA, to Indian companies seeking access to the U.S. market by leveraging investment operations and partnerships in the Kingdom of Bahrain. For more on this issue, the U.S. charged the affairs to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Margaret Nardi elaborates. So much of our work at the U.S. Embassy is focused on promoting export and long-term investment opportunities for U.S. companies in Bahrain, as well as opportunities for Bahrainis to export to the U.S. We also highlight the contributions of U.S. companies to the growth and development of Bahrain's economy. But this event that we are hosting tonight turns the focus to how Indian and other international companies can also leverage Bahrain's investment opportunities to access markets in the United States. Bahrain and the United States already have a strong trade and investment relationship made possible by the U.S.-Bahrain Free Trade Agreement, or as we know it, the FTA. This year, the U.S.-Bahrain Free Trade Agreement is celebrating 15 years of shared prosperity. Since the FTA came into force in 2006, two-way trade in merchandise and service has more than tripled, from $782 million in 2005 to nearly $3 billion in 2018. Despite trade drops during the pandemic-induced economic downturn, which were expected, trade now exceeds $1.3 billion through the first three quarters of 2021. We think this is a remarkable turnaround that's creating jobs, growing new businesses, and contributing to Bahrain's economic recovery. The FTA facilitates large volumes of international commerce because it eliminates tariffs and customs fees on virtually all merchandise and finished products that are traded between Bahrain and the U.S. This is true for U.S. exports that arrive to Bahrain, as well as exports from Bahrain that go to the United States. And the U.S. Embassy is always looking for opportunities to expand bilateral trade under the FTA and not just for U.S. exports. We're interested in promoting trade and investment opportunities in the opposite direction. So those things that are made in Bahrain and destined for the United States. Because of the FTA, Bahrain is a very attractive and competitive launching point to access the United States, which is a vast open market with a skilled workforce, a growing economy and unlimited investment potential. Bahrain's transparent, streamlined and tax-free business environment make opening and export driven business easy and straightforward. Our embassy remains fully engaged with AmCham Bahrain and the Economic Development Board to ensure our commercial partners leverage the U.S.-Bahrain Free Trade Agreement to access markets both here in Bahrain and throughout the United States. Building stronger commercial relations with Bahrain is a U.S. government priority, and we're here to support businesses that are interested in doing that. So I would encourage anyone who's serious about wanting to leverage their Bahrain-based business to access the U.S. market to contact the U.S. Embassy's commercial services team and they can provide further support and insight. Their contact information is included on our website. Thank you for your time. The U.S. Congress delegation who visited the Kingdom of Bahrain recently hailed the significant role assumed by the Labor Market Regularity Authority, the LMRA, in fostering and nurturing the work environments in conformity with the highest international standards, which fully safeguards the rights of work relationship parties. This is achieved by a set of ambitious initiatives and programs which guarantees the labor rights and stand against human trafficking. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by LMRA's Protection and Grievances Director, Ms. Shireen Khalil Saati. Hello, Ms. Shireen. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us more about the visit and how it confirms the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain? Good evening. I would like to thank Bahrain TV for the opportunity. Well, uh, the main purpose of the visits of the delegation of the U.S. Congress is to strengthen the long-lasting relationship we have with them and to promote the strategic partnership between the two countries by showcasing the developments in various sectors, as well as sharing experiences as an, and uh, exchange expertise with the delegation and provide insightful information in this regard. So we do have visits from the U.S. Delega uh, uh, from the U.S. and especially by delegations, uh, by members of the U.S. Congress, um, Delegations of the U.S. Congress, we have them on a regular basis, uh, three, four times a year, and it's been uh, a long-lasting relationship. In our last uh, meeting and 
uh, with them. In the joint meeting with the Alamari, we have discussed Bahrain achievements. We have highlighted the implementation of the authoritative policies we have, the procedures and programs that are set out to regulate the labor market in all of its aspects. And also we have um, discussed and uh, highlighted the institutionalized role that the LMRA take, uh, takes to promote a work environment in a way that ensures the protection of the rights of the parties involved in a work relationship. Also, we have discussed the, kingdom, uh, the kingdom's achievement in the field of combating trafficking in persons. And those achievements are based on dedication and reinforcing the seriousness of the crime as a human rights issue. And also, the sustainability of efforts that are always enhanced and developed to keep up with the ever-changing nature of the crime would ultimately uh, in, which ultimately ensures a healthy, safe, and balanced work environment. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And that was the LMRA's Protection and Grievances Director, Ms. Shireen Khalil Saati. Thank you for joining us. The National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, approved the emergency use of the uh, to combat COVID-19, making Bahrain the first country to utilize the drug. The drug will be available to adults 18 years and above who are immune to or are taking drugs for individuals with occupations that put them at risk of infection. The decision follows the evaluation of data provided by the manufacturer, AstraZeneca, carried out by the NHRA's pharmaceutical products regulation department.